Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can revamp the forts on your Valheim server. It's a simple script that you can add just with the Expand World Prefabs mod. But before I get into the addition of the script to your server, let's make sure that you understand what this does. Here we have a charred fortress. There's been some changes which you might notice if you're particularly used to how the vanilla forts are, but I won't explain those yet. Instead, I want to talk about the focus of this revamp. The first thing is Iron Gate added these awesome catapults and siege weapons, but as they're implemented, players don't even really use them. You see, players often just build over the walls and they use the siege weapons maybe like once to see how it is, but that's it. As implemented, forts are not something where siege weapons are the path of least resistance for the player. And that's where our revamp to the fortresses comes in. First off, you can see that there's another charred cross in front of the gate. That isn't normally there, and this helps put more pressure on players who try and use terrain management, like the hoe, to get over the wall. You can still do that, I didn't block it completely, but now it's just a bit more inconvenient to do so. The bigger thing that's actually prevented here is building. You cannot build anywhere near the fort. You can try to, but look what happens. You lose the resources and you get a message that says, Siege the fortress first. This helps prevent the most easy cheesing, which is to just clear a little spot to the side and then make a little wooden bridge and go right over it. But from a game development perspective, it's not good to just limit the player. You'll find that you end up reducing fun that way. So we also added some other changes. One of the things we noticed about the siege weapons is that they aren't as satisfying to use as maybe they could be. You know, considering these things are endgame stuff, they really need to feel like the siege weapon melts the fort. Otherwise, players just don't use them. So, what we've done is make the bombs much more powerful, as you'll see in a moment. Instead of just triggering one explosion, they trigger many different siege explosions, and this allows you to more quickly break in. However, I found that something that might also be helpful is to allow players a sort of siege weapon that's overkill, but acts as an item sink. So that's where the molten cores come in. By using this Expand World Prefab script, when you throw a pack of nine molten cores, it will actually make an explosion that can penetrate the wall. So let's go over here, for example. All you'd have to do is run up here with your character and then toss the nine things down. You see a little animation, and then we run back. And so I'm lagging a little bit, so things were slower than they would normally be. But you can see that those cores damaged a bunch of these guys, and then they bust a little hole in the wall. These ones aren't as strong as the others, so normally what you would do is you would have to multiple times throw down your core bombs and then run away because they can actually kill you. And these ones look like they're actually triggering properly now. For some reason you couldn't seal the stuff. And you can see that they do a lot of damage. And they kill the mobs that are nearby, and also any player who's unfortunate enough to be there. And now you can see that there's enough that you could actually jump in through here. And I find that this adds a more interesting mechanic that acts as a fantastic sink for the molten cores, which you only get inside the forts. For most players, these Molten Cores are going to be pretty much useless. So what's going to happen is they're going to get Molten Cores, and then they're going to be able to make Stone Portals. And then, that's it. That's it. Once you have just a couple of these, you're good. You don't need them anymore. You can do, like, two forts. So, this way, if you use a bunch of Molten Cores, you can break into another fort. But as you saw here, I needed to use three piles of nine, which is, like, which is 27 cores. That's actually a lot. But I find that it's a fun mechanic that helps give people another way to siege the forts. But now that you got a glimpse of inside the fort, I can explain how the rest of that no-build mechanic works. Because some people like to make bases out of these forts, so why should it just be a no-build zone? Obviously, maybe that's not necessary. 
And that's where these fancy little wisp lanterns come in. Here, watch what happens if we just destroy these chests. We're gonna destroy that one. This one. And now that we're back outside, I can take out my hammer and try building, and look at that. Now, because I've cleared the build protectors, I'm able to just build freely. Meaning, I could do whatever I want with this fort. I could clear out all the spawners and build it into something, and this way we get the best of both worlds. In addition to these mechanical changes that you've seen so far, there's also a couple extra additions to the fort that aren't normally there. As you can see, there's a Morgan inside the fort, and each time you reset the forts, they'll basically roll a chance extra Morgan, and also extra Fallen Valkyrie. There were originally more vultures here, and that's because each fort will come with vultures as well. I'm going to reset the fort right in front of me so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There we go, the fortress has reset, and now it's rebuilding itself. At first it rebuilds the base layer, and then it'll lag a little bit, and then the mobs will spawn, and those mobs trigger the extra stuff to show up. So we can see that we just got our chest with our wisp lantern, and now we're starting to get the mobs. Those are the vultures I was telling you about. And you can see that there's actually an extra spawner up top here. There's also an extra spawner here outside, and another extra spawner on the other side of the other gate. Each of those spawners adds more of these vultures which really help give the fortress more repellent effect in the beginning. In general, the fortresses weren't dangerous enough to players on the outside of the fortress, and this gave players more of an opportunity to bypass mechanics. So now they have to clear more monsters in order to be able to build something, but they can't even build anything unless they destroy those wisps that you saw earlier. Now I'll reset the fortress again so that you can see how sometimes there's more fallen Valkyrie and there might be another Morgan. This one, for example, has a Morgan, you just can't see him yet because he hasn't spawned. This time, this fortress did spawn with one fallen Valkyrie, and that's actually more common. I find that it really helps defend the fortress. These things function best when they're really dangerous. I know it might seem counterintuitive to just make things more challenging, but they'll actually help with your player's immersion, because what happens after fortresses is pretty much the game ends. So the more challenging you make it, and so the more of an experience one fortress is, then I find that the more beneficial. It's incredibly hard to figure out what kind of rewards to put in something at the end of a gameplay experience that are actually impactful. So it's more easy, or it's easier rather, to just make the forts themselves more fun and a lot more challenging. And by making them more explosive, you kind of do make it easier, but I find that it's a good balance. In order to install this vanilla-friendly Charred Fortress modification on your Valheim server, you'll need to use a BepinX Valheim server and put on the mod Expand World Prefabs. Vanilla players will be able to join and have this experience that you've seen. They don't need to even know that you've made these changes. And after you've got that set up and you have Expand World Prefabs on your server, You'll need to go into the Valheim World Editing Discord, which is the Discord that you can access either by going to the link in the description of this video, or by going to any of Yair's mods and scrolling down to look for the Discord for help and examples. This is the holy grail right here. Once you're in this Valheim World Editing Discord, you can scroll down and go to this config share section where you can find all sorts of these sort of things that you can put on your server that are vanilla friendly. In this case, here's the fort one that I just uploaded. We're going to load it up here, and you can see that there is a description of the effects, and then some mentions of how to install it, and some photos, and then here are the scripts themselves. Installation itself is actually quite simple. You're going to put Expand World Prefabs on your Bepinex server. You need to make sure that it's in the plugins folder. And then you launch the server once, turn it back off, and then you'll have this Expand World folder here. And this is where you can put the files that I'm about to show you over here. So you would just download each of these as they are, and then you would place them in this spot on your server. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. 
If you want to support my work, then you can consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server. I have a lot of content that's related to customizing Valheim servers, and all of the stuff that I make videos about is completely vanilla friendly. Everything you see here can be set up on a vanilla server, meaning crossplay enabled, Xbox, Mac. You can do these things. You actually have options. You can make vanilla friendly experiences. And if you want, you can get a server from Zap Hosting, the affiliate partner that I work with. And you can see this guide how to set that server up. And if you want any kind of video about something related to Valheim, then just comment below. Let me know. I love making videos in response to questions that people ask. I find it to be a great way to make content. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.